Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Container ships are among the most integral parts of the global economy. In fact, around 90% of all non-bulk cargo in the world is transported by modern container ships, which can carry up to 24,000 20-foot equivalents, or TEU units per trip. Most of the nearly 10,000 container ships used today are based on a design first introduced in 1956. That is of a large flat ship with four main holds and up to 1,200 feet of deck length for storing prepackaged cargo containers. All operations and accommodations are limited to the bridge and several levels beneath it, which take up only about one-sixth of the ship's upper surface area. Though some ships have their own cranes for loading and unloading cargo, most maximize deck space by relying on key side cranes posted at their ports of destination. What's more impressive than the sheer size of these vessels is the fact that it is often operated only by a crew of 20 to 25 people. Even the largest container ships are manned by a crew of up to 35 people. This is necessary since so little of the ship itself is dedicated to operational and personnel quarters. However, living quarters are not sparse single-bed closets. Instead, they are spacious and well-equipped, with many of them including an ensuite bathroom. Additionally, modern ships also include an indoor pool, gym area, and laundry facilities. Of course, the crew is expected to keep these areas clean. Work days for the crew typically include two four-hour on-duty shifts for 24 hours. During this time, they are expected to operate and maintain ship machinery assist with navigation, and help keep their crewmates fed and happy. Of course, timelines are tight aboard cargo ships, which can be quite stressful for everyone involved. However, there is often time to relax and even lounge on deck when the weather is nice. Currently, hiring standards for container ship crews are originally with such short docking times, most crew members don't have the opportunity to set foot on the places where the ship docks. The design of container ships makes them ideal for carrying cargo safely across oceans, but it does not make them immune to waves, storms, and other hazards. Oh. That's kind of cool. It's hard to stand up straight. Clearly, stacked containers cannot merely be placed on top of the deck, lest they risk being lost at sea. To fix this problem, the bottommost containers are secured to the deck using twist locks. Then, as the containers are stacked on top, traditional twist locks secure them all together. In some cases, rods and turnbuckles will be used to keep the stacked containers from sliding or moving. This is our healing control system, so when we're loading cargo, because cargo is not always loaded on the center line, uh, the ship will generally start to list to port or starboard. So to compensate for that, we use a healing pump, which pumps water from a tank on the port side to the tank on the starboard side or vice versa. Despite these precautions, container ships face many unique challenges. 
The first is obvious, top lean containers. While common enough due to rough seas and bad weather, it's important to note that these stacks of containers can weigh thousands of tons. Not only do they pose a threat to any personnel on deck, but they can easily shift a boat off course or cause significant damage. Moreover, if containers are not properly secured or the twist lock system fails, millions of dollars in assets may go tumbling overboard. There is also a greater chance of fires aboard container ships due to the wide array of materials they often carry. Items like cotton, coal, and fish meal, for instance, can quickly heat up during a voyage, leading to a large, hard-to-control blaze. Due to their size, weight, and sheer mass, docking a container ship can be quite the process. Indeed, many supply line delays can be attributed to bad weather and slow deliveries due to long waiting times at ports. As a vessel approaches the dock, a local harbor pilot will come to greet them in a smaller vessel. Once aboard, they will help the navigator avoid shallow areas and other dangers. Since these massive ships cannot maneuver under their own power in such a tight area, smaller tugboats will push or tow the container ship into place. Once in position, mooring lines will be attached to secure the ship to the dock, just as would be done with any other boat. Though it may sound simple enough, a lot can go wrong when berthing a ship of this size. That's where the harbor pilot can be an invaluable resource. These men and women know both the port and the surrounding area like the back of their hand and can guide container ship captains around debris, reefs, and obstructions with pinpoint precision. It's also worth noting that harbor pilots are actually employed to protect their harbor, not the ship itself. When it comes to situations that may jeopardize the safety of the environment, of that or the harbor crew, they will withdraw permission for the boat to land. It's the easiest way to explain it, I suppose, is it's valet parking for ships. It's not always very nice going out in a small boat to the big ship. It can be a bit rough sometimes. Even in rough seas, the harbor pilots must board the ship in one way or the other, be it from another vessel or hoisted down from a helicopter. In Arctic regions, ships will be accompanied by an ice pilot who can direct them around ice flows and other frozen hazards. They embark and disembark the ship from extended platforms of an ice sheet while the ship continues to move. These men and women typically employ specialized ships called icebreakers, which can sail through the thick ice ahead of a docking ship in order to clear the waterway for them preventing damage. They typically boast a double hull construction made of special grade steel that does not weaken when exposed to low temperatures. Millions of mariners are directly and indirectly linked to seaborne trading. Great innovations and procedures have been adapted and continue to be improved to ensure the global trade through the maritime remains open and safe. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.